With all this good loot to chase, I mean Midnight Coup and Mountaintops this week, completing Onslaught's been a routine thing when it comes to Destiny. It's time for Felwinter's Helm, guys. I've done some Legend level 50 wave completions with it, and I'm unsure why I don't see this thing talked about. It's brutal. It's awesome. And Onslaught overall, just crazy super useful. I want to show you the power that it has, what it's actually doing with the play loop. And I've been messing with it, trying different variations on Strand, Solar, different weapons, different mods, fragments, aspects, just trial and error, and I'm my final build to show you. And the build has a ton of freedom to it. There are some mandatory things, there's four things that are just non-negotiable, but you do have access to them. So I'm going to talk about the full build and then break it down. This is on Voidwalker, Felwinter's Helm, Warlord's End. Powered melee final blows create a burst of energy that weakens targets. Finishers and final blows against more powerful targets increase the radius of the burst and the length of the weaken effect. Let's remember about Felwinter, the debuff from it, it's the most powerful debuff in the game. It's the same as the Hunter's Tether Super, the same as the Tractor Cannon, 30% more. The best debuff in the game. For the aspects, feed the void. Defeating a target with the void ability activates devour, and devour, when you have it up, you gain health back and grenade energy. Chaos Accelerate with the Vortex. The pairing allows you to drop a larger Vortex grenade, and with devour, when you have that up, all the kills are getting back that Vortex. So the Vortex grenade, pocket melee, I have Burst Glide, Healing Rift. Non-negotiable fragment, Echo of Obscurity. Finisher final blows grant invisibility. Non-negotiable fragment, Echo of Cessation. Finish your final blows, create a burst of void damage that causes nearby combatants to become volatile. Defeating volatile targets creates a void breach. And remember, when you pick up a void breach, you get class ability energy. Then I personally have Starvation. Picking up a void breach or an orb of power grants devour. And this is going to happen a lot, either with the orb or the breach. And it makes it to where you don't need things like better already, recuperation, to get health from orbs. Instead, you get devour. And then Harvest. Defeating weakened targets creates an orb of power and a void breach. It all loops. So on the helmet, I am using a void weapon, but the setup can change easily. So harmonic siphon for void, heavy ammo finder, heavy ammo scout. So if you use, let's say a solar weapon, I'll show you what you need to do to change that. You're gonna take off the scout and just add in the desired siphon. Arms, harmonic loader, bolstering detonation and momentum transfer. So causing damage with my grenade grants melee and class ability energy because of bolstering and momentum. There's gonna be a lot of vortex hits because of devour. You're gonna get that grenade energy a lot. So if you're running a non-void weapon, you're gonna take off bolstering because instead, you'll have a void breach that gives you class ability energy. On the chest, I have emergency reinforcement. When your shield becomes broken, you gain damage resist. And then reserves for my heavy, which is void. Legs, I use triple void surge for my heavy weapon and also the primary weapon that I'm using. And again, that's gonna switch with whatever you're using. If you're using a solar weapon or a dragon's breath, it's solar surges. Class item, non-negotiable. I mean, you can try others, but I tried them all and these were the best ones. Reaper, after you use your class ability, your next weapon final blow spawns an orb. Proximity Ward, gain an overshield while performing your finisher. And then healthy finisher. Finishers heal you. You go into the finisher with an overshield, you come out with health. It's perfect for shanks, similar things. Let's start talking about Fell Winter in action and talk about weapon pairings and the play loop that's going on here. And it's so good for Onslaught. So on a low health enemy, go in for the finisher. Again, you get that overshield, perform the finisher, you get health coming out of it, you go invisible, and after that, the whole area gets stunned, disoriented all stopped in their tracks and the ones that were close to you they get pushed away by a wave and they're also volatile and every enemy that is just sitting there stunned and disoriented they're 30 percent debuffed for you and your team really really nice thing to have again it's a mobile tether without a super it's a tractor cannon without using a tractor cannon you land a finisher on a yellow bar a boss the blast is larger and it lasts longer so the setup on your end there's a lot of safety going for finishers on low health targets because of the overshield and then once you perform it you're invisible right after everything's severely weakened and that's really good it allows you to clean up everything pretty quickly if you wanted to and a lot of this clips i'm just showing you the stun essentially but even if like you're really hurt in your one shot you see a low health the finisher animation is kind of rubber bandy you get right in there get the overshield you go invis and you'll stay alive. Everything's pretty easy to go down, especially because there's volatile thrown in there too as far as damage, but it also allows you to do things like this. Say you need to get a revive. I had the revive right here after I got my finisher, but I picked up a battery, so I just did it again. The whole area is stunned and debuffed and I'm safe good to go. And I've used this with a Tether Hunter on the team and not. And Felwinter's is not redundant. It's all in addition. Because on your end, there's going to be times where you need to get safe. So you do the finisher, you go invis, everything is stunned. So even if your invis runs out, they're just still sitting there. So you perform a finisher on a tethered enemy. Well, you're still spreading volatile to the area. You're still going invis. It's all good. But there's a lot of times where there's no tether, there's no tractor cannon, and using Felwinter, better yet, like on a champion or a boss comes in, you can do Felwinter things around them, hit them with 30% debuff for your team. It is very good. It's going to be easier to down enemies that are around you. Again, that's for you and your team. And you might have noticed, 
I'm using Graviton Land. So I do prefer a Void Weapon, and I'm going to give you a couple that are really good too. And then I'm going to give you a Solar Build with it. But after using just like all of them that I could think of, Graviton felt best. It did the best It's because it really synergizes with Felwinter's Helm. Because the additions that they made a while back really elevate it with how I'm using it. Because we have the Exotic Perk Cosmology. All those ads in tight spaces, it going off over and over, it can just actually clear out a wave of them. And after the Felwinter Melee, you get a final blow. There's the Cosmology perk spreading around on volatile targets. Really, really good. Or they're just running down a hallway. Graviton Lance takes care of them. But the Catalyst, one thing it has turnabout. Breaking a shield gives you an overshield. So that could be by you shooting it with Graviton Lance. Sometimes Cosmology, as it's spreading around, it finds shields and breaks them. You get an overshield. And then it has Vorpal Weapon on top. That increased damage, just nice to have. It's really complete for Onslaught. The aspects, fragments, how you're set up with your orbs, with Devour, it's really good. And I also have a pair of Disorienting Grenade Launcher. And that's just good at base. It's great just to stop things in their tracks, just like Felwinter. But even better with this setup, you can stun them. You can almost just walk around and try to find one that you want to get low, then perform the finisher, and then have that huge debuff, and they're stunned again. And I'm also using the Envious Assassin Bait and Switch Edge Transit, because reasons. And the Void setup, Triple Void Surge, that GL is getting Triple Void Surge, but also Gravelance and my Void Weapon. So a lot of times, Triple Void Surge with Warple, Triple Void Surge on Cosmology, it worked out really, really good. But my next favorite actually goes to Monarch. And this is solely because one, it has built-in overload. That's good. But two, because of Felwinter, the debuffs, the volatile, the poison from the weapon, and then the catalyst unrelenting. A lot forget about unrelenting. So it's working with Devour and Unrelenting. One way or another, getting health back. It was really, really good. I was doing the same thing. I was blinding, using the Monarch, getting health back, spreading poison, spreading volatile. It worked out good. So if Gravelance isn't your thing, you can try this. And the last one is Collective Obligation. And this was okay. And it was okay because after Felwinter, you could Leech Volatile, you could Leech Weaken, hold on to it, and at a distance, you could apply those things. And Collective Obligation also has the Umbrella Sustenance perk. Anytime you gain Devour and Overshield, become invisible, the magazine refills. Well, you're doing all of those things all of the time. And the Devour one specifically, because you have Devour up, after a kill, you reproc it. So the mag's always refilling. It was nice. It was fun. But Graviton did feel the best. But you could try other weapons, but obviously a solar weapon. And I chose Sunshot. You're still getting orbs from the Siphon. Various things. You're getting grenade final blows, because Devour's going to be up one way or another. Picking up breaches, whatever. So you have Devour. You have Razor Precision. You have Flint Striker, Kindling Trigger. All the things on the artifact to make solar weapons great. Radiant. All of that with the big debuffs in areas. And like when you get the ignition on a 30% debuffed beefier add, it worked out good. So Felwinters is awesome. I highly encourage you to try it. There's dim leaks down below. And you can mess with a build if you want. Maybe instead of Chaos Accelerant, you do Child of the Old Gods. Maybe you want to take off Harvest and make your grenades weaken. Whatever it is. But I, I did feel that these four fragments with those two aspects did perform the best with Felwinter. And if you're on the fence, just go into a public... 10 wave one the playlist one and get a feel for how it performs it's really really cool there's been times when they're on the payload on the hill you're able to get off a finisher or i haven't talked about it because it's pretty obvious you could do the pocket singularity melee get the final blow stun everything on the payload and then just hit him with a gl and delete everything again it's like you tethered it or you tractor cannon the entire area it's super good so try it out with or without a tether i think you'll be impressed with it if you're new here remember to hit the subscribe button and if you are subscribed thank you so much for your support next is going to be midnight coup um there's a ton of rolls i still need to get and i just i've been grinding it and grinding it and i've got three or four of them but i still need about four so once that video is ready i'll let you know hopefully it'll be tomorrow but today it's all about Felwinter's winter's helm and onslaught let's talk about it down below thank you for watching and until the next one i am cool guy